Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We're going to go over like another important biostatistical uh, topic today about we're going to talk about, we did talk before about the bias. Today we're going to focus on selection bias. Again, my name is Pramil Charya. I'm a director of research and I teach medical students and medical residents, a program director in internal medicine and the transitional residency. I'm also assistant professor of medicine. So let's get into our subject, okay? So what is um, a selection bias? A non-random sampling or treatment allocation of subjects such the study population is not representative of a target population and most commonly it's a sampling bias, okay? So what are the different types? You got non-response bias, you got susceptibility bias, you got Bergson fallacy, and you got prevalence bias, and you got the attrition bias. So let's look at the first one, like a non-response bias. It can occur when subjects refuse to take part in a study, or like if they like drop out, um, or if you do a survey and they don't like respond to you, right? I mean, if you say, if you look at a survey, if you get more than like 70% uh, response back, it's like a good survey and all that. So that can affect, that. that is a non-response bias. So now let's look at what is susceptibility bias, okay? In case there's a first disease predisposed to a second disease, the treatment of subject with the first disease erroneously appears to predispose to causing a, like a second disease. Um, an example, let's say like a poor, uh, you got the patient have like a postmenopausal syndrome. It's a higher likelihood also having um, higher likelihood also having developing endometrial cancer, right? So estrogens given for the postmenopausal syndrome may receive a higher than actual blame for causing endometrial cancer. Okay. The next one is the Bergson fallacy. So let's look into what's Bergson fallacy. Let's say you have case and control selected from a hospital where people are uh, less healthy and different exposures, okay? We talk about an example, you got like 500 patients were randomly assigned to a treatment and a control group to check the efficacy of a new antihypertensive medicine. In this example, hospital patient does not account for the generalization of the outcome within the population. So remember, it's always like, you know, some hospital, you could have like a very healthy patient uh, population and the other place you can have like you know less healthy so that can affect our study right and what is the prevalence bias or which is known as the Neiman's bias it occurs when studying the relationship between an exposure and outcome using the prevalence of the outcome instead of the incidence remember that so it occurs when you study the relationship between median exposure and outcome um, instead of using the using the prevalence instead of using the incidence. And the bias often happens when a significant amount of time has passed between exposure and investigation. Remember that. For example, study of patient hospitalized with the flu will miss those patients who have died and those who have been discharged after recovery. Okay, so what is attrition bias? When you talk about attrition bias, this is like the uh, participant who lost to follow up, have a different prognosis, and then who completed the study. So let's look at an example. In this study, like a number of participants drop out and fail to complete the educational program or the follow up survey. You know, you can do like intention to treat um, analysis, maybe you'll be able to correct the attrition bias, okay? Um, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation soon.